Welcome back to the low APM challenge. We are now in the second season of StarCraft II 2022, which makes it about the 38th season overall. I have no idea how many. But it is a new day with a new patch. The new season brings us a whole bunch of cheesers on the ladder. The maps are the same, though I do expect sometime this season they might that might no longer be true. The patch is the same as it was a couple weeks ago. Um, a little odd that the intern decided that two weeks before the season rollover would be a good time, but I guess he didn't want it as a new season April Fool's joke. So, here we are. As Zerg, I believe we ended at gold one-ish? Um, we'll have to see. I know there's uh, some ranking bugs going around. Not the MMR. The MMR has always been good. The number has always been correct. But a lot of those fancy schmancy borders and leagues are a little bit more malleable than we might like. So we'll have to see. But it is the first week of the season, which does mean there are a lot of people pretending like they want to play StarCraft coming back. Uh, as there are every season. Playing their placement match or matches and cheesing the shit out of people. And this definitely affects Zerg the most. As Zerg is the race who is on the receiving end of that. Uh, even from other Zergs, uh, more often than not. So I expect today, uh, so there are two different tiers. There is the highest level, where I usually am relatively competitive, like the near Grandmaster, where everybody's trying to get enough games in to get to Grandmaster when it opens up a week into the season. So they cheese a bunch there. And then there's the comeback kids, the people who haven't played for a few weeks, a few months, maybe even a few years, and they're like, you know what, now's the time. I wonder if that cannon rush still works. And the answer is, it probably does, but no better than it did. Um, so we'll have to see. Maybe my predictions are entirely wrong. But today, I'm going to showcase my most safest of builds. We're probably going to be opening up pool first, as a matter of principle. Uh, I don't know if I'll commit to that. We'll see. Zerg is very fluid, flexible. And that is also its greatest weakness. But welcome back to learning to work smarter and not harder. Welcome back to me failing to uh, stick to the low APM chart of 90 or 105 APM drawn from the average of all players around this league. But Zerg just has so much to do. Uh, we got a whole bunch of questions uh, as well. Now, Jimmy, these are the questions from the Protoss. Okay, we got the Zerg questions. We got important questions like uh, your videos are always too loud or I lose to cheeses and I hate it um, that we will be answering as well. But I, I think this will probably be a longer episode assuming the ranking system is not broken. And I want to jump right in. I'm going to do my best, but uh, with Zerg as always... Uh, we'll have to the the chart is a little more of a suggestion just because of all the mechanical requirements and the lesson plan will be progressing actually bring that back up bring it up they made it this far they didn't skip to the first game they're still in the intro they're paying attention they're liking and subscribing before they fall asleep they're saying hi to shiba so a low APM challenge Zerg distinctly different than Terran and Protoss because Zerg is distinctly different we've already talked about queens larva and creep Hatchery hotkeys, avoiding bad habits, inject, stuff like that. Basic scouting, when to drone, when not to drone. Still not a hard and fast rule, but general ones. Overlords and you. Uh, just mechanics in general. What lair tech is good? What should you avoid? And then with Platinum, we're going to be reinforcing good habits, like building enough drones in a timely manner, getting your overlords in the right spot, and tacking up instead of going all in when needed. Uh, and then advanced benchmarks, like building even more drones and tacking up even faster and maybe even some creep spread. The the special sauce we haven't added in much because it is the, the least relevant of the things queens need to do between injecting and defending. <laughs> Um, and also the most APM intensive for what it is. So that is what we're starting off with. And we 
for the very first Zerg actually will be the first of this new season. Um, and one more before before I start for the season two of 2022. This is my challenge. Play five games per week for whatever league you're in, or at least your MMR is in. Bronze, five. Silver, ten. Gold, 15. Platinum, 20. Diamond, 25. Might sound like a lot, but as you move up the leagues, the games get quicker, just by their very nature. Uh, and... With less practice comes comes less accomplishment and less improvement. So uh, you do need to play a little more as time goes on. And that is what I'll be trying to do as well. Okay, now we can press it. Now we can press the button. The maps, the maps and map vetoes are the same. We got a Protoss to kick things off. <laughs> Master, Grandmaster, I see your comment. Thing is, I think a lot of people who do <laughs> all credit to Pig and Vi, but they're bronze to GM series. I'm a little more realistic, maybe a little more cynical. If you're watching this, you're very unlikely to be master or GM. Need more minerals for that. Uh, you play. You should know how many games will help you improve by that point. Most of you aren't at risk of it, so you've kind of gone past my ability to efficiently generalize basic uh, practice and uh, improvement. But it is nice to pretend, isn't it? We're gonna go down. 17, 17, 17. We're still gonna start out with that until the first cannon rush. A big part of dealing with cannon rushes is stopping it before it starts. And even at the higher levels, we're seeing a lot. So putting this overlord at my natural, you see here, we're just doing 17-17, not 17-17-17. We're cutting out the gas guys, they're getting a spawning pull. So if I see a probe building pylons, I will pull either, if it's building one pylon and is one probe, I'll probably pull four or five drones. If for some reason I didn't see it or they're building multiple pylons, I'll probably pull more because they're obviously committed. Occasionally, you'll get players who are... Uh, They'll fake it, uh, the cannon rush, but I think at this level, if they build a pylon and then don't end up cannon rushing, I mean, even if you pull drones, you're not too far behind, and also, they're being way too cute for their own good. Let's be honest here. Another overlord I'm gonna rally. And build a set of zerglings. And we see he's got a cybernetics core. We're going to just put that overlord on the pervert pillar right there. So this means no cannons. That's the first thing we've ruled out. The next overlord I'm going to have covering... Eh, we'll put it over here. Just looking for those little high ground locations. As I get drones, I have enough minerals to take the third. He's not doing anything aggressive. He has an expansion. He has an expansion, and he has uh, multiple gateways at the front. So this is about as safe as it gets for me. Setting up camera locations. Getting more queens at three minutes. Well, I need to build some more overlords. I'm going to rally them from the eggs. Put one there. Put one over here. And that's kind of the end of the overlords I really need to have out there. He's got a stalker. Technically, the Zerglings could kill a stalker, but I'm not gonna bother. Gotta spawn more overlords. All right, Swan. Thank you for the tip, but also simmer down. More drones. Got a new queen. So now, because well, remember, don't forget Spore Twenty. We've got 
two queens. We're gonna get some basic creep here. Put these in the gas. Make sure we got 16. And while you can go over 16 drones, make no mistake on that. I mean, that is the ideal number if you can easily set it. Inject. Inject. Got queens on five. I'm gonna get at four minutes. I don't know what I'm dealing with. We'll get a roach one. He's got three sentries. How does he see me? He's got an observer. You see right there? Or you don't see, but that's the key point. I'm going to get Zerdling speed. Why? Because if he has a robo, he does any sort of push. I probably need Zerglings. Obviously, roaches are good as well. I'm gonna add this queen. I'm getting enough creep to cover my main. I'm adding this queen to the hotkeys. But right now, with a robo, three sentries, and an observer, we're going to 50 drones. I'm going to get some evolution chambers. Since it isn't, uh, it isn't a uh, Stargate build, we're going with 520. And by that I mean, essentially, around five minutes or so, once I have plenty of drones, I'm going to get those spores. We're going to rally to the third base now. The army we're going to look for is still a bunch of roaches. Getting the Evo chambers. Not enough energy. I've got a lair done. I'm going to send an overseer into his base because now that lair is done, I need to kind of... I don't want to get stuck building a bunch of roaches if he does happen to, I don't know, build a bunch of disruptors. Or even sometimes you'll get players who switch into the Void Rays or something crazy. We'll get some more overlords here. More injects. And since he hasn't moved out... Before I build all these roaches, remember, I'm banking larva right now. We'll just get another base. That no good, boss. I'm going to build an overseer and attach it to the creep queens. He's got a robotics. A twilight council. And a forge upgrading. Yes, he's getting something out of that. Nope, roaches are the call. We'll build. 22 roaches. Hotkey them on control one. Inject. Build some more overlords. So, if he's upgrading on the Robo Bay, there's actually nothing dangerous to roaches he could be upgrading. There's Colossus range, which I guess you could count as dangerous, but... There is, and then there's Warp Prism and Observer Speed. So none of those help units that really deal with roaches very well. Yes, it's probably Colossus. So what I'm going to do with all those sentries, we're going to build as many Ravagers as I have the gas for here. Get some more Injects. How many drones? The next drone count is 70. I mean, technically 66 is full 3 base saturation, but 70, because we might build spores and spawns. Um, we might not end up going all in, adding some upgrades. So, notice what he did. He moved oh out. I mean, he may attack me. But, I'm going to put one roach, shift, and then just click it off the group. We'll continue the creep. Only one creep tumor down each boss. lane is what we're doing. Building more, gas for that. more roaches. I'm just out of queen. Get gas here. Make sure to hotkey this base in. 
We're gonna transfer some of the drones from the main. He's got some immortals. Just build more roaches. So, here's a key point. I have more bases. I have a lot more bases. If I have three bases, he's just taking a third. I have four bases. I don't need to attack on his terms. Building some overlords so I can max out. I can wait. Either he attacks me or I max out on my terms. We're gonna build a spine crawler in each base. Get those injects first off. This is for the seemingly inevitable Dark Templar that people seem to love. I'm down to 62 drones. We'll just make another round. And while I have the minerals here, get more hatcheries. Mineral cluster we'll spread the creep out. One more lane. Because the creep tumors give vision, is the key part there. I made another round of roaches. We finish plus two. Hive is on the way. So I'm going to do a few rounds of injects here. We'll get the gases. Going to get a hydro list done. And overlord speed. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to split off a few roaches to the side. The rest of the roaches, I'm going to move out. I got this creep tumor. I'll just do that. There's a set of rocks here. And a lot of maps will have this to stop early attacks. They're, they don't take long at all to deal with. So what do we see? He's got that left side base. So this should draw the army out of position. We can also start the 3-3 upgrades. We can move these roaches back. He actually has mass and mortal. So we're gonna cast corrosive bile. If he has nothing in front of it, the immortals aren't actually that scary. So we probably had an observer over my army is what happened here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build hydras now. All out of gas. And we're gonna build some zerglings. So we had a colossus. But I can start lurkers. Your are under and attack. another key point. We're going to keep going back to the Vipers. I'm going to get at least two of them, and I'm going to hotkey them from eggs on the Control 3. I'm actually going to add some Overseers in with them. So the Vipers are for either blinding Cloud on the Immortals or to abduct the Colossi. That command's no good, boss. That is going to be their purpose. Depleted that mineral cluster. I'm going to consume. Just shift click because they don't get to full energy unless you do so. Get the other Hydra upgrade. Gonna start with Lurker Range. Get some overseers. And as many lurkers as I can build. As we get the gas. I'm just waiting to press the button. Mineral cluster depleted. How many drones? Let's add in these hatcheries. Throw another round of drones in to max out. Can't do that. We're at maximum supply. I know, Swan. And we've got 3-3 three, three on the way. I'm going to queue up the other upgrade here. 
more injects. We actually see with those roaches. Evolution's complete. That mineral cluster's mined out. Uh, where he has many of those units. Ah, uh, and this is how we saw before what we were doing. Brand new evolution over here. So if you have all these on the same hotkey, mineral cluster depleted. Burrow is just for the lurkers, somewhat conveniently. So. Another round of injects. We'll build some of these. Depleted that mineral cluster. Okay. I have the vipers to potentially abduct. I don't mind losing a few of the Hydras. Use Blinding Cloud. We're gonna abduct the Colossi. So, some people... I saw some comments about how Vipers are very APM intensive. But think about it this way. If you don't use Vipers, think of how many more units and how much more micro you have to do. Because when you do use Vipers, it's just, well, yeah, you have to control another group, usually. But it can save you literally dozens or hundreds of units. And actions in a fight. So, instead of having to try to fight it into a concave... What happens? Could Toss have done anything to win that fight? He could have walked away. Was the best strategy here. The best strategy, as we've learned in the low APM um, Protoss, is to attack anywhere and then move with the main army. There was no reason to fight here. He was maxed out. What upgrades does he have? Plus two, plus one. I do have three, three. He's got... Actually, he's fighting 20 seconds. I didn't even check his upgrade. But, I mean, on paper, this isn't a terrible fight. The lurkers make it rough, but... The blinding cloud. The units trip over each other to try to go forward. Because they can't see and they can't shoot. But they still want to attack. So they want to get into range to attack. Which brings them into the Lurkers. And allows the Lurkers to uh, do quite well. I mean, it was a scary army to fight without Vipers and without Lurkers, for sure. And the reason he had so many Immortals... I, I'm going to go ahead and suspect that this this um, Protoss player has maybe checked out the Protoss series. Because between the Observer placement and the build order, I'm reminded significantly of what we've been teaching Protoss players. <laughs> I mean, it's not a, a particularly complicated process, but he did a good job of building up an army. Uh, it's just that late game. And this is what, like, I think it's better for you guys, if you're actually looking to improve, to lose games because you're trying too hard to control Vipers than to just lose your Vipers and then not build anymore. They're that good, and honestly, the Zerg army kind of sucks without them. Even Lurkers. That's, it's really... Okay, that's not, not the correct, um, yeah, that's, that's not right. That's the wrong one. That's... That's... It... No. Nah. 2600 is not bronze, is it? I'm pretty sure. Let's... Let's do... Wait. Last season, as Zerg, we were gold 2. Hmm. 
Yeah, so this is so this was kind of what I was talking about. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave league. And now we're gonna play another placement match. May to make it clear, my MMR will change the same amount on both of these matches. It's just the hamsters are struggling to connect the dots nowadays. Leave league might not work. The number doesn't the number is the only thing that matters. The MMR number. Usually this is fixed at some point in the season. It's happened before, which is the disappointing part, but we're just going to continue moving those numbers up. <laughs> I know, it really does suck because it doesn't feel as satisfying. I guess maybe it should, but like I got 3,000 MMR. It's much more satisfying to see that screen and get to uh, platinum or diamond, right? I'm 1700, put me in masters. Well, remember, the league logo is just a skin over the top of your MMR. So essentially, you're a toddler wearing, like, a Joker mask right now. Or something, I don't know. Uh, that doesn't face the fact that doesn't change the fact you'll face other toddlers You be able to load Oh, did we go over so gold? What was the limit for gold? It is 90 I, I had 92 did I not? 92 was the number Which was pretty close Is this a new bug? Um, there have been versions of this ever since, uh, like four years ago. Everyone on European 2v2 is just masters. No matter what their MMR is in 2v2 on Europe, it's just everyone is masters, or at least the vast majority. So that was like the first iteration of this, and it seems to have spread. <laughs> I don't know how, but here we are. Apparently, I do appreciate, and this is why we couldn't really use the stats from SC2 replay stats last year for bronze, because technically right now, despite being gold MMR, I am bronze. <laughs> or I was until I left League. So, but once again, if your number says 1700 MMR, that's who you'll play. I know it doesn't make it much more convincing, but you will be facing fellow 1700 MMR players. So, embrace the Bronze League, such as, or Masters League, such as it is. All right. So his hatchery actually finished earlier than me. So he went a hatch first year. I'm getting four zerglings. Yeah, I hope to get to silver. It also means, I mean, before you couldn't really trust the league borders when you're loading into a game. They were mostly either potentially inaccurate or intentionally inaccurate, like playing unranked at a way lower level or something. And, and for a while, it took the league border of your highest level race. So, I don't like spending so much time on talking about all these issues because the number works, the number goes up, you're doing better, number goes down, you're improving in the other direction. For now. All right. Got forces under attack out there. We're gonna get two more queens. You might be like, "Well, isn't he going for zerglings with speed?" We're gonna wall off, which we learned to do, and we're gonna do it kind of quick here. Get the Evo chambers. Because I have my suspicions that I'm actually, yeah, you know what? 
bring this queen down. Got a new queen leading the pack. Oh, there you go. And I will just let them finish because I am not risking this. We'll start plus one, start the lair, and we're going for a roach timing. Because he just spent how much larva? Not a small number on <laughs> building zerglings. And that larva is not drones. That's a very key part. Zerglings, this just in. Not drones. This may come as a shock. Get that overlord. So the downside, you can't really put overlords in the same spot as you can in uh, other matchups because Zerg also has overlords. Okay. Wait, can I do the magical creep tumor? Is this going to work? I don't think so. Okay, no. It's not quite the spot for it. He does have a third here. We're going <laughs> to... So, if you... Wait, wait, wait. Maybe I need the spine crawler. Uh, I think... Don't try this at home. Mm. Ah! So, you can teleport your queens out if you do it. This is the same version that Pro Protoss used to get their probe out for cannon rushing. We're going to get some more OVs here. And we're going to start taking down that Evo as well. Yeah, I'm losing a couple extra OVs that I don't need to lose. Mutation complete. Man, I, wish I, I didn't... <laughs> I was too busy working on teleport. I gotta focus. I'm, I'm acting like a bronze leaguer. I have too many drones. I go, I wonder if I can teleport my queen out of my base. I don't know if that's the priority right now. Evolution's complete. Uh, uh, I have the roaches. Select the army for now. Oh, he has a lot of roaches. So here, we're gonna get... Hmm. They're gonna need to transfuse a little, come down my own ramp. And then a move for now. I'm going to start a Spire. So this is my big... He spent a lot of money on Ravagers. So a lot of gas. So that's what he doesn't really have here. Now we chase the units. Don't get distracted now. Get right up on top of them. Because he obviously doesn't have enough units. That's what we're taking advantage of here. I'm using a lot of Selecto Army, and this is the time for it to make sure all the roaches come out. So maybe focus on hitting that plus one timing instead of teleporting your queens is the summary. It looks like we are, are still bronze. <sighs> oh. oh, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. What have you done to the goddamn ranking system? I 
I don't know what happens. So it is gold. It is still gold. I forget what the platinum level is. I'll look up last seasons. So it says the maximum league tier is is 20 MMR higher. So if I play one more game and I hit that league tier, what's going to happen? <laughs> Do I get promoted to gold one? There's only one way to find out, eh? But I owe the people. That was five over. I did, honestly, between... No more tele... I, I swear you can do it, though. Maybe maybe later on, if I get frustrated or after a game is already over, I will show you how to teleport. Very important to note. Yeah, pretty much. If you go over 90 APM, like, how are you even supposed to follow that? Is my... Even though I was sitting there on two base, barely moving for... Oh, we have the Protos. I do like the gasless and then gas at three minutes. I think it's good for getting enough minerals and drones. And then, by that way, you kind of delay your... Well, I guess we'll find out now. Damn it, Bobby! Well... How is it this fucked up? Ah! <laughs> uh, some of us are trying to have... Okay. If this if it happens one more time, we're just gonna copy paste a gold league logo over it. Yeah. I will give you the So I'm confident at some point during the season this will be fixed. And the only thing that matters is the number at the end of the day. But it does make the bronze to masters series a little harder. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> ah, yes, we have a Masters player. Yeah, I like how it shows his MMR, because when you're in Masters, they think you finally have the mental fortitude to handle seeing your opponent's MMR. Except his MMR is 2680. <laughs> Bronze to... <laughs> it used to be you couldn't see how many losses you had before Masters, which was... Same, same. That's how you know it's not master. No one talks like that above diamond. All right, that does not. Got to spawn more overlords. Diamond is U two, and then above that is just also GLHF. <laughs> That's how it works. So against Terran, my second Ovi is gonna look for proxy racks and then just chill outside where my third goes. I'm not, like, against Protoss, it goes at my natural, because that's where the cannons show up. Against Zerg, it goes towards their third, because OVs can't die nearly as easily out on the field, and uh, you need to see Zerglings coming in. So a second, essentially, the second OV is your backup for seeing what kind of cheeses they could be doing. Uh, I, I definitely, I'm late on the pool here. I should have gotten the pool way earlier. Against Terran, the main early cheese is Proxy Rex. Zerg is Zerg Rush. And Protoss is Cannons. Those are all the things they can do before your first Overlord gets across the map. Why is that relevant? Because my first Overlord will scout whether they're expanding. Or... They have anything at the natural. Like for Terran, it's building a command center. For Protoss, it's walling off the natural. For Zerg, it's building a hatchery. So, I'm only really worried about stuff that can potentially happen before my first OV gets all that information. Oh, 
we're gonna go get that. I put the camera location. I like to set up my camera locations beforehand. So, is there a command center? There is not. I'm already building four links. We're just gonna send them to his ramp. I'd be like, isn't taking a third base pretty greedy if he's not expanding? Yeah, it is. You guys gotta be acknowledging it. But when you go gasless... Alright. We're gonna... This map is a little finicky. Are you serious? There you go. You gotta find the, the spot. Honestly, I don't get it the first try every time, as demonstrated there. Some of these pervert pillars don't have nearly as much actual high ground area as you'd think. Built a couple more ovies. We see a command center. He's building a reactor factory. Okay. So that means either Hellions or he just uses that. So he, he kind of got the reactor factory build, but not in exactly the right order. And he is building a command center. And I am late on getting my gases. So we built another Ovi. This one's going to go out in the lava fields. Another one. Other lava fields. And past this, I just put Ovi's in a safe spot, really. Hot key in this hatchery. I'm going to have patrol lings on the corners. I'm doing that all from the selection box and the minimap. More drones. We shift clicked a few drones in there. And I am going to wall off just like against Zerg. With the, uh... Though, I put that creep tumor in an awkward spot. So, I think that'll be fine. Yeah. Because, Hellions... And, oh, Spore 20. We're going to start a lair. I like to put it at the natural because... Oh, he's got Blue Flame Hellions. That's pretty crazy. Blue Flame Hellbats. Okay, we got to micro a little bit here. Bring all the queens together. But we do have a Roach Warren finishing. Transfuse. Make sure we focus fire as well. Just transfuse this. Well, thankfully Hellbats are terrible. And the counter to them is Queens. So. And we already love Queens, so. Get some more gas. Usually 40 to 50 drones is when you want that gas. Nope. This is just my inject queen now. We're gonna get one. One. Now that I did the Zerg Moan challenge, I now know. Oh, let's worry about this first. Get the gas. One, two, three. One, two, three. Transfer over. So there is one thing to be a little afraid of here. And that is starport units. I'm gonna build that overseer. Right now, I've actually got over 60 drones. I don't have much of an army at all. He's building some tanks, which is... Let's go deal with the tank. Sit down, Spore Crawler! Do I have speed on the way? We definitely want speed. I'm not transferring drones, because right now this base is under fire. In fact, it looks like he's going to get it. Build some spores. I got quite greedy. Transfuse. A little bit of micro action. Yeah, I know. I'm working on those overlords. So, when you're not sure what to do, and they got a lot of anti-roach units, 
it depends on exactly what they're building. But this is when the Mutas can maybe be the choice. Because... Yeah, we're going to right-click right up next to that tank. Because none of these units are particularly great at hitting air. And by that I mean they don't. They just don't hit air. At all. So I have roaches with upgrades. I wouldn't... I wouldn't start out with this as the strat. Almost ever, to be honest. But... Uh, it is a good... You've been sitting there building tanks and hellions, and that's it? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna take advantage of that. Three in gas. One, two, three. Your forces are under attack. All right, that spire's finishing. Now he's just got tanks coming across. So we're gonna build... These are the only mutas we're gonna build. We're gonna build 11 mutas, put them on. Uh, control group 3. And then, we're back to roaches. Right back to ro... Let's not get crazy here. I know everybody loves mutas. But, they're great to mix things up. They are not great as a main part of your army in many cases, so... Not enough... Just gonna attack over there. Get another upgrade. Need more overlords. Don't really know how or why. We got transfuse in there. Get more upgrade. How many drones? 74? That's perfect. Let's shift Q some injects into this. Macro. Hatcheries. Infestation pit. And now I'm allowing myself some micro time. Alright. He doesn't have an engineering bay. So he can't build turrets. I'm building roaches for at home. He's building his engine bay now. Yeah, that is kind of a key part he missed. Got forces under attack out there. Using Selecto Army, control one on the roaches. Your forces are under attack. And there you go. It got a little dicey. I didn't... Okay, well, I guess I'm bronze then. And I... 100 APM. I overdid it. That was... Uh, I underestimated his commitment to the factory units. I did not need... Like I said, I went to 60-something drums. No reason to do that. Let's look at the worker count. So, as you can see, possibly a bit of an overinvestment. Um, uh, <laughs> 10 more drones, fine. 15, maybe. 25, too much. Well, he was masters. You've been here this whole time. You've been here throughout all of this, this whole... Okay, no, no, positive learning environment. <sighs> Some people are just I mean we got to we got to try to make it he was probably joking probably hmm they just let anybody in the master besides me can you explain how I've never placed a masters I feel like we need either a command or like a video. So the summary is, MMR is the only number that matters. Everything else, pretty fucked. You're either bronze or you're masters. Neither matter. Because the league is just a skin. And sometimes you get assigned the wrong skin. Um, it's cosmetic. 
effectively. MMR still works. If MMR did not work, it'd be fucked. And usually when this has happened, and it's happened before, it does get fixed. Not always in a super timely manner, but within a few weeks. So the MMR going up and down, that's, that's what matters. It isn't as satisfying, but... Yeah, it it does suck a lot. It does suck, I will say. I think it it is incredibly demotivating for people, especially people who don't understand it or how it works. But it just adds to the StarCraft 2 is the most confusing and unplayer-friendly 1v1 experience you've ever had, and that's why you keep coming back. So, I'm just, here we go. I'm just gonna go ahead, real quick, I'm gonna fix it. Um, there we, there. Gold. It's gold. This is the equivalent of gold one. <laughs> Fixed. Um, gold. It is actually gold, <laughs> too. See? Actually, real quick, let's, um... Mm -hmm. What site has the... the borders from last season? I don't remember. I'm gonna say 3,000 MMR was plat, 3,500 was diamond, 4,500 was masters. It's within a hundred or so. So, at three thousand, or about, I think it's a little lower than that. But the case plat too. There, there. The thing is, we're no longer in the season. I don't know which sites have past seasons of MMR ranges. I know current. If you check your profile, the bar will show you what you correspond to. Um. Okay. The the theme of the series continues. The details for those tuning in every single game, wondering what's going on, should. It, it, I have no fix for that. I don't know. It's effectively gold one. That's where we're at. <laughs> I think I'm still getting promoted based on those tiers, except it, for some reason, is doing it in bronze. We'll make up our own legs with round numbers that don't change randomly. I declare... I do declare, I, winter of the internet, declares now 2,800 MMR on the North American server on this, the second day of April of the year 2022. I declare 2,800 matchmaking rating to be platinum. Let all who disagree Speak now, or forever, hold your gold. No, no contention? It is decreed! I will be making more declarations as need arise. Mm-hmm. 
This is a little embarrassed. I thought stream snip would be hard. I mean... When I got first try on my bad race. You picked Terran! He's like, I didn't think I'd be able to stream snipe so easily. And also, when you're listening to the stream, it's called cheating. Not sniping anymore. Though I am pretty convinced if people are truly... Um, if they're truly of this league and not like diamond sniping and gold or bronze, <laughs> then listening to the stream is definitely more distracting than any info they gain. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit back, react to what he's doing, um, and I'm going to get 70 drones and max out. And that's the plan. So unless he's doing some super cheese... He should already know the strat. Like, it's not, not, not. Don't got the minerals. All right, this is when you give him the business. All right, we got another one of those reactors. The business is very good for. All right. Uh. It's like the lol emoji. It's like, I'm smiling and I don't know what to say. So. Hive cluster just popped out a queen. Let's move on. <laughs> Solid. Rest in peace, TV. That's the classic Protoss of like, oh, I guess it worked. Classic, right? That command's no good, but I'm sure that's gonna need some cream. Can't. Need more minerals for that. Got forces under attack out there! Alright, he's building a bunker. I'm very late on mining the gas, but that's not a huge deal. More minerals for me. We're getting spore 20. Wait, actually, I got the spores too early. I, <laughs> there's a timer on the screen. We're gonna roach Warren and Evo Wall. Plenty of drones. Not enough overlords. <sighs> yeah, I, like I've said, I don't mind stream sniping as long as you are actually in the range to stream snipe. Like when you're, as we've seen, clearly like a couple thousand MMR higher, but you happen to lose a bunch of games in the last day or two. Feels a little worse. <laughs> But yeah. The reason we don't just play against viewers most of the time, as like the whole series, is honestly, well, I've played in a, a significant amount of StarCraft tournaments, including like top tier, like MLG I played at. I got beat by Bomber, if you remember that name. But even me, with thousands of games played, I freak out. Like, I, I had it and have issues sometimes with just panicking, right? Imagine you're a gold player against someone you know is doing a series that, like, it people just don't play how the latter plays. It just, they, they'll say they will, and then they don't. And that's just reality. I kind of wish you could do viewer games, but it just doesn't work out. Like... <laughs> It's a very stressful game. So, we're, we're once again going for a bunch of roaches. He's got some tanks here. Guess we're gonna need those vipers. 
cluster. Shh. That mineral cluster's mined out. He's running away. Come back here. Depleted that mineral cluster. Okay. I guess we'll get some other seeds. What do we got? We're gonna get those 70 drones. Get an infestation pit? Yes. Gotta get those vipers. Brand new evolution over here. Why? Got forces under attack out there! Sixty-eight. Still working on a creep tumor down each lane. I'm gonna control click the OVs and then just move them back a little here. All right, another round of drones. That's plenty. That mineral cluster's mined out. Hot key this basin. Gonna get a spine. Gonna get a hydra den. So, because he's gotten a bunch of tanks sitting there with sensor towers, I feel completely confident to just sit back and build up. Which means 70 something drones, get a hive, get upgrades. Can even think about lurkers. Let's get those patroller lords on the corner bases. Did I get overlord speed? Always good to have overlord speed. Go over there. That is a... Uh, um... Evolution's complete. I'm not even sure how you would unbind. I don't. Your are it does under not attack. make. I all right. <laughs> not really important. We're building some vipers. How many vipers did I build? I think it was too many. Is there any such thing? Well, it depends. If it's like Rainer versus Dark, there's no such thing. If it's versus Terran, yes, you can definitely build too many. Like five or six, maybe, is the outside number. Man, I wish I hadn't seen that. Three is solid. Like five or six, you have probably more spells to cast than you're ever going to actually do. So. Good one. We're at max supply. So. All right. We're gonna make sure we got those injects here. While we're here, we can get the upgrades queued up. For essentially oh, everything. What is this? Mineral Okay. I should have the overseers on my Viper hotkey is usually a safe bet. And I maxed out. I've got upgrades on the way. Let's go. He has a little mine. We're gonna abduct that tank. And abduct this tank. Evolution's complete. So if I can hit more than three or more tanks, binding cloud. If it's just one, abduct. Hmm. 
We did it. We stayed under. He was master. Okay, that's enough. If only he hadn't somehow unbound every Terran hotkey by rebinding Protoss hotkeys. Which is definitely... I don't... I... Hmm. I'm not even sure how you pulled that one off, to be honest. Um, I'm not even sure what the process is to, that that breaks everything. It's like, I use grid, but I actively changed every Terran high. I don't know. Are you playing with your only your right hand? That's called using your mouse. It's like, I only use a... I'm, I'm using a 20-button MMO mouse. I was experimenting with different hotkeys in different places, and it broke all my unit hotkeys and off races. You're right. Okay. Wait, you were diamond last season. Uh, well, good luck sniping with that. I don't understand, though, how that... It can... No, that doesn't make any sense. No, that's still... You know what? Moving on. I don't... It still doesn't make any sense. There are some, like, arcade games you can play that break stuff, but... Um, but I, <laughs> I, I'm, I want to know how to break them. All right. We've got a Terran. So many Terrans. I guess, I mean, Terran statistically, especially through gold, but in general, Terran is the most played race, including and up through the only time it gets overtaken is Grandmaster, where Protoss has an edge, but not by that much. <laughs> but up until GM, Terran is the most played. We need more minerals. Uh, it's a little server dependent, like at Masters, it might shift a little, but Bronze, Silver, Gold is solidly minerals. Terran. Pro like, it's, it's less overwhelming at Platinum, because that's where Zerg finally starts to catch up a little. And Diamond is pretty even, actually. But still, a little Terran-centric. So, it is not necessarily surprising that we face more Terrans than anything else. Facing only Terrans would be statistically improbable. But it is not it is the least improbable of the three <laughs> and we played uh a zerg a pro there haven't been that many games and over here worrying about bob screwing up the ranks why why can you block a spotting claw why are you able to block it <clears throat> i'm sorry What is Peach Avenue? Hmm. Anyways, this is where the third OV is going. The area where... The alternative area for Hellions, essentially. I'm going to set up those camera locations beforehand. So, one, two, three, four. Did you know that moving your camera takes no APM? Because you haven't actually done anything that affects the game. Moving your camera has yet to actually accomplish any any impact on the game. So, uh, even if you think someone's playing very fast, it, they could just be efficient with their camera. Um, and that is that is actually a big part of being efficient. Like, 
A lot of players with 300 APM barely move their camera because they're just sitting there right-clicking a bunch, for example. So, How do you lock your cameras? I'm using the drag scroll key, which essentially grabs your mouse. I have it on a side mouse button, but it's default middle mouse. Um, I'm using drag scroll to just approximate. And when I get bases there, I'll just double click to center them. So, but it gives me, like, I could, for example, pick up a drone, use the camera location. There you go. Which is what I did need to do right then, actually. All out of energy. So that is several Marines. Let's make sure I think that's the right spot, but I'm not 100%. I'm going to get a few overlords and i saw so many marines that i'm not gonna wall off you might be like why well because marines outrange most of my units so i don't want them to be able to get like a concave outside of my wall How about spine crawlers? I see no reason to build spawned. He hasn't moved out yet. The other option is he goes for medevacs, in which case spines aren't going to be that helpful anyways. And I should be able to see them come. I have 37 drones, but he doesn't seem to have an expansion. I'm going to get a spore crawler, because we haven't ruled out the idea that it's something that's not marines, and he was just building a bunch of marines. But if he was, like, if we were in diamond, I'd probably be more actively worried. But right now we're focused on varying the build only as much as necessary. And right here, what I did, I built the roach horn a little quicker. Um, I didn't wall off, but overall, otherwise, the build is the same. Like, I'm building roaches now because he hasn't expanded yet. Uh, I'm not only building roaches, but I'm not going to go above, like, 40 drones until I figure out what's going on. Which, well, there you go. We figured out what's going on. Spread the creep. He's uh, going straight to the main here, it looks like. This was a little sloppy. It just tanks. So we gotta pull the drones, which is a little annoying. Now we go across with what's left. So the tanks were annoying. I don't think the mule drops were BM. I thought he planned on... So, fun fact, that's the build I originally used to get to Platinum in 2010. Because, if you remember, there were maps like Scrap Station and Desert Oasis. Now, most of you probably, hopefully, don't. Where the air distance was shorter than the, uh... The air distance was shorter than the, um, the ground distance. So, what you do, you research siege mode. You get two medevacs, one with tanks, and then one uh, with marines. No upgrades, of course. Uh, there's your battle cruiser. <laughs> Just sit down here for now. Start a spire. Your forces are under attack! We can kill these gas geysers. He jumped into the natural, where I have a spore. I'm hot keying all the queens together here. He's just jumped another battle cruiser into my main. Man, our drones over here. We'll go hide these by the spore. Get some more spores, because usually when you go for battle cruiser, you don't have too much follow up. 
I'm actually gonna micro bid here. Because if we can kill the battle cruiser, that makes things a lot easier. Got forces under attack out there. We lost the first one because he was uh staring at the second one. That mineral cluster's mined out. These Zerg just mutated again. You might notice what happened to the roaches. The roaches are still sitting there. Your They're still there. He's sitting, he's staring at his battle cruiser. That's what's happening. He's gonna repair the battle cruiser on the edge of my main. That's certainly a play. Need more overlords. He loves those mule drops. Why? I just popped out a queen. I think he has the tactical jump. He researched Yamato cannon. I do have corruptors now. Um, we're building corruptors. So that means he spent even more money on, the, on those battle cruisers. I get plus two. How many drones do we got? Alright, we're gonna do micro. This roach, gonna be first. Gonna get hit first. So that way the tank doesn't do as much. Micro. So that was uh, a very mid-range Terran build. Ah! So that is uh, a build popularized by Terran players who want to feel like they have a strategy, but instead, really, it's just battle cruisers with extra steps. The APM limit for gold is technically 90. Are we past? No. I have declareth that platinum is 2800 based on the evidence from last season. So we are still technically in what some might call gold, and I fucked it up. Once again. But, obviously, we were not going to let Mr. Um, Mule Drop Battle Cruiser have any... Like, I want to crush those builds as hard as possible so they go back to co-op where they belong. <laughs> Is it mean? Yes. Is it a bit much? Also, yes. Is it worth it? Yes. <laughs> I do think, though, there is something to be said for people like all these guides and tutorials kind of ruining the latter experience. Um, after 12 years, people kind of, e even if you don't know, you can learn pretty quickly, I like to think, how to play, right? Um... Which kind of makes it boring. I will say, like, back in the day, I could, in 2010, 12 goddamn years ago, fail to learn how to play Terran, eventually figure out how to do a double medevac tank drop, and get to platinum, because a lot of things were different. Like, Queens had three range and about the same anti-air. So, like, I don't <laughs> So how did Zerg defend all these cheeses Is it in Wings of Liberty? That's a great question. They didn't. Statistically, for the first year, until multiple nerfs, Terran won over 50% of everything. <laughs> After about a year, there were a significant number like, now you need a depot before building a barracks. Now mules no longer mine extra on gold minerals. Like... <laughs> Uh, those were very key changes dealing with multiple shenanigans. Now there are bricks at the bottom of your ramp. That was more for three pylon blocks, but also for double bunker. 
And it was almost entirely for Zergs getting fucked over as well. Because remember, when you started with only six workers, it took relatively longer to get the economy to just be like building another hatch. Ah, yes. I mean, if you look on these days nostalgically, where all these people and casters and, and content creators made all these things, remember... That was a minority of the time StarCraft II has been out. Legacy of the Void has now been out two years longer than Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm combined. So, that was a long time ago, Boomer. Now you're stuck here, learning how to actually play. Back in my day, we mined eight minerals at a time. All right, you guys ready for some Zergling micro? Neither am I. He just, he just decided not to. All right, <laughs> never mind. It's not needed. I'm making some overlords. We're gonna get that gas in a moment. Three minutes. We're gonna go straight up the ramp to the main. He's Got building a, a lot more Zerglings. We're gonna, yeah, we need, you know, that wall off idea. And a spine because he's already built more than enough Zerglings to justify it. Could somebody build our Roach one? Would somebody build the damn Roach one? Okay. Honestly, at this point... I'm probably just gonna hard wall. I think? No, that's actually too much space in between these things. Yeah. We're just gonna build another Evo chamber. I bet I, I bet I could teleport the queen out. No! <laughs> we'll start with plus one attack. Need more gas for that. <laughs> Not enough energy. It didn't work. But wait, now I can now now I bet. Oh. Stop it! Stop! Stop doing this. Okay, how many drones? Forty five. That's actually too many. <laughs> okay, we'll inject. It doesn't add any more larva, but it adds more injects queued up, is the key point. Layer's nearly done. We'll start building roaches now. As long as I have enough for speed when the layer finishes, because now we're using the natural larva regen of the hatches. Alright, we're gonna get rid of this. <laughs> Because otherwise you're missing out. Remember, respect that larva. We're gonna get the third. That command's no good, boss. Let's attack move here. These are just mutated again. Once we get speed finishing up, it's time to go. He has something moving out of his base we just saw. Gotta spawn more overlords. He has no vision here now. Oh, the OVs will inspire me. Inject. Inject. 
select all army, all the roaches. Let's go. We haven't seen what he's doing, but... All right. Click these in. And that... So there were two options. Either he had a similar but slightly less amount of roaches because he couldn't have the economy because he built all those lings. He tried to tech up to something like mutas, but once again, because he built all those lings, if I do a sharp-ish plus one timing, it should be enough. And then, uh, option three was he just got greedy and has almost nothing And that. It says the maximum lead tier is 2984, which I think it's just making up numbers now. We are very close to the arbitrary Platinum League. At which point we'll cover some of the questions, and then we'll do some more games after that. And then, I mean, we still got a while to go. Two or so more games should bring us to Arbitrary Platinum. Um, and then we do have some very important questions, like, Winter, why are your videos so loud? Ah, yes. So I've just given up by the third game of answering the question of why are you bronze? Because everyone's bronze, so nobody is. The number is all that matters. Moving on. Everyone's bronze. So nobody's bronze. I wish that 20% of my entire video doesn't have to be explaining why the ranking system is fucked up but not really fucked up but that is the starcraft 2 we know and love all right feels like 20 percent it's definitely less but... all right we're gonna take the third or we're going to do the biggest brain play, which is bringing down another drone. Does he cancel? We'll just take the other base. We're not going to let him tell us what to do. We're still going to hatch first. You've seen this. But usually what happens is the Protoss will just block it with the probe. Building a pylon that early is a big commitment. <laughs> it's not huge, but it's, it's size. It's a significant commitment. So, if you want to... Now if he starts building cannons at it, that's when things start getting spicy here. But I just took the other base, and I've got to pull on the way. The, the best thing you can do is not panic. It is not... This hurts him more than it hurts me. If you've ever watched anything close to Pro, Protoss versus Zerg, this is just a fact of life, is the only places you get to expand as a Zerg are their natural or your third. That is just how it works. So, we're making four lengths, which we would have made anyways. Let's see. Does he have... Has he expanded? I mean, he could go full zest. And just take the gold base. He he built more pylons at my natural than he built at his. So that leaves us Got a new queen in an interesting back. spot. <laughs> Anyways, let me take my natural now. I'm gonna move this oh, over here. 
I'm just gonna right click. He's sending a zealot across. Okay, we'll kill it. Hello, sir. Where are you going? Are you okay? Do you know where you are? Do you need me to call someone? Got a new queen leading the pack. Sir? Anyways, get the gas guy, sir. Sir! Well. Okay. Uh. It was a scouting zealot. I'm gonna make sure we get those gases. I mean, after you build, you just built a couple more of something. I'm gonna build a spine in my main. I think those were adepts. I'm not 100% though. We're gonna build a roach horn in the main. This is the hard part, is you're kind of stuck doing kind of weird stuff with a bunch of... Oh, he's just building a bunch of zealots. Okay. He has, he has no gas at all. Okay. All right, then. So we inject. We're gonna hotkey all the queens together. Round up. Gotta have that creep. Spine crawler's done. I think he's right clicked on the queen. Oh, here we are. Okay. Well, no. Sir. So at this point, this is the kind of strategy you can directly. This is not a don't overreact. He has no gas. He has no cyber core. He can only build zealots and cannons. And it looks like cannons are now the choice. So here are the options. We watch for him moving out. This is a very committed protos. I'm gonna rally here. We're gonna bring the spine crawler down here. We're gonna get up another round or two of drones. Building more cannons, so we don't- I- a lot of people- Oh wow, it's so loud! Turn the cannons down! We're trying to macro! Okay. <laughs> Anyways. The first priority is getting, well, just the basic Road speed and plus one. Getting more injects. Does he still have zealots in his base? He's building more cannons. Okay. All right then. Let's get those zerglings. I'm gonna shift click on a patrol to look for if he gets creative with his bases. Cause remember, you're allowed to expand to other bases on the map. I know, it sounds crazy and dangerous. I'm gonna get a spore crawler. Um, sir. That probe is pretty, pretty sus. The thing is, whatever he does is not going to be as good as me just getting 70 drones, four bases. And I'm going to max out on roaches. Like, there's there's not... The surface area of cannons is not enough to stop the roaches. Like, you can't fit enough cannons into a small enough area to stop, at least even remotely cost-effectively, the sheer amount of roaches. That's just... And if I really cared, we could get a, uh... We could get... Say it. You know, you know what I'm gonna say. Broodlords, yes! Got forces That's the one. Mutation complete. Man, I wish I hadn't seen that.
All right, more more OVs. Yeah, he's he's upgraded to the next level of tech. Plus two, plus one. Don't got the minerals. So now we need to make sure he doesn't get any extra bases. Does he have any upgrades? He has charge, which is something. Did I get an infestation pit? I did. We're gonna get the Hydra Den, the Spire. <laughs> Isn't that everything? Yeah, pretty much at this stage. Holding down the Roach Key. All right, we're going over to the other side. More roaches, please. Just select all army. All right. Queuing up the Hydra upgrades, getting the Lunker Den. Your forces are under attack. You're recalling. Where are the carriers? Nope, those were zealots. It was nice of him to, to do an express delivery of some of his army. Yeah, there was a high Templar in there. That was. Hanging out. <laughs> Got forces under attack out there. How's that hive? I didn't start it. So not great. Is the summary then. Storm? Ooh. We're going to take all the bases now. Brand new evolution over here. That command's no good, boss. Hmm. You're not supposed to be here. <laughs> Enemy's taking a fly swatter to our drones. That command's no good, boss. No Templar for you. He has so many DTs. Did you see that shimmer? We siege up one of the observers. He's gonna storm here. He has one more storm. It appears the Mass Nexus strat not quite paying off. <laughs> I think I may have overdone it by doing everything. Yeah, slightly. I could have just built 200 supply approaches. That was a 90% play. Getting Hive Tech and 80 drones was a 95% play. And a 92 APM one. Wait! We have not yet reached Arbitrary Platinum, so therefore, I did still fail. $27.95. We'll make our own League Tiers, and I will make a fancy graphic and maybe an explanation thing, but mostly a graphic. So that way, until Bob gets another lunch break to fix it, um, well, no. We're getting a good mix. I remember, what was it? The Protoss series? Got only Terran. 
Does killing the HT end the storm early? It does not, but I love that idea. <laughs> yeah. It should, right? <laughs> A random player. If killing a ghost gives the shields back. How about this? Add another activatable ability, ability on the sentry. The reflective shield. It lasts one second. Any abilities cast at the reflective shield are reflected back on their caster. <laughs> Corrosive bile, EMP, fuck it, nukes. Why not? <laughs> okay, so he's random, so I have to assume the worst case scenario. He's Protoss. So my second overlord will chill near my base. And it's also the safest place. It's the safest placement if he isn't. So I can always move it. But if I have it out on the map, I'd run the risk of getting cannoned or proxied as well. Of course... Like, playing against random Zerg, you don't really... Like, there's not much to change your build. Even, like, the only thing you can really do, even if you know a cheese is coming, is save up larva for Zerglings. I'm talking about, like, if they're doing something from their base. If they're putting buildings at your natural, yes, you can pull drones and deal with that. But if they're doing something at their base, there's not that much you can change in the, in the first few minutes of the game. That's just, there's no options. You just build a spawning pool and you wait it out. Maybe you get gas a little quicker, you save up a little more larva. He's got a reaper. So I'm just gonna move this OV right up front. He has no expansion. Important to note. Rally down here. Let's see. There comes Mr. Reaper, sir. Nice to meet you. Please get the fuck out. <clears throat> I'm sorry, get the heck out, you fuck. Got a new queen leading the pack. Hive cluster just popped out a queen. Was going gasless intended? Yeah. And I'm gonna bank up some extra minerals. The point of going gasless, I'm doing right now, in the gold to platinum league, is not because it's efficient. Not it's to make sure I don't build Zergling speed. And therefore, I don't get stuck microing a bunch of zerglings. That is the intent. It's to get you to make sure you're building the units that are actually good in the early game. Instead of baiting yourself into failure. Which is the mo- Up through, up to diamond, I think going zergling speed by default hurts, hurts zerg players more than it helps. Based on Angry Coach and most Zergs I play, it is almost certainly hurting more than helping. We need more minerals. Zerglings get you with their cuteness, yeah. They take a lot of larva, APM, tender loving care. Roaches take none of these things. Alright, they got a face not even their mother could love. And she spawned them. Genetics are a hell of a thing. Alright, we're gonna... We saw any Hellions. I'm gonna do a semi-wall. Just like Protoss here. No cutelings. There are very niche scenarios where we might consider getting the cutelings. It's mostly super early cheeses when literally you're stuck making it. It's if they're going for, like, Mass Stalker Zealot or something. Um, also, 
I mean, there's not too many scenarios you need to against Terran, really. We need more minerals. Oh, I missed Spore 20. Zerg is about ideas. All right, it's about <laughs> eventually finding yourself where you need to be. It is kind of true. You do want to do it in a timely manner, but not every game. There are optimum times, but there's not... It's not nearly as hard and fast as this is when you need to build your barracks, your factory, etc. For for Terran. All right, we got out there. I've got these Erglings. We're gonna send them all over the map here. I'm just right clicking on the map. Building some roaches. And then with the rest, we're building drones. And as time goes on, we get closer and closer to thinking it's Battlecruiser. Okay, he's got something here. Um, building more roaches. I got 50 drones, which I'm gonna burrow. It looks like he's just gonna siege up right on it. Wait, where are you going? Come back. Um, so he kind of like misclicked, which is gonna end up helping him. That, I did not expect that move. That was quite a move. So here we have an armory. He's got medevacs. He's doing like a bio-curious build. So the summary is not battle cruiser. It's ground. Which means all we need to do is determine whether I need to change up my strategy. AKA I need anti-air in a much more dramatic capacity. The answer? I don't. I made a few too many laser lords here, but we're gonna get two two infestation pit. Gonna rally to this base. We got fifty eight drones. I start that info. I did. I did. I did. I did. All right. And then a hydra down because we're hinting towards lurkers. I won't go lurkers if it's not needed, but we're hinting towards those lurkers. When you have, the general rule is at least one extra queen for how many hatches you have. Usually up to two, maybe three, depending on, like if it was battle cruisers, I'd just continue building queens. Just like if it was Protoss and they were going for, for Stargate units, I'd just keep building queens. But otherwise, having four or so roaming queens and your starting knitting crew is a good starter level move, I think. You got enough to be able to shoot down a medevac or a liberator. And you can focus your minerals on drones and whatever unit your catches your fancy that day. And by that I mean roaches. If you don't fancy roaches, learn to fancy roaches, alright? This isn't co-op. Which has actually really sick roaches too. Well, everything in co-op is broken. <laughs> That's kind of the point. Start that hive. Get the upgrades. I keep building not drones. I, I want 70 drones. Don't look at me. Don't hate me because I'm arguably beautiful if you eliminate all the competition. Okay. So. Well, he started it. So we're going to A move towards this third. We got the drone count. Now, be careful coming up this ramp here. If he doesn't have a third, we're just getting vipers. Okay. He doesn't have that third. I'm going to rotate around. And look for the other one. Five. One, two, three. Evolution's four. Complete. Four vipers. Hold down the roach key. Click it in. Your force 
get some basic defense. Could use some more inject or shift Q at each base. Because now we're winding up. So housekeeping, and then you get to, like, it's packing for a trip right now. I'm, I'm going to take a trip across the field. Gonna go attack a Terran's third. Okay, you gotta you gotta make sure you got you don't leave the stove on at home. Or actually do leave the stove on. If the stove was a hatchery injected, leave the stove on. Um or if the equivalent was not leaving the stove on, well then that. So now that I made it now that it makes more sense. Well, how many drones? We're just gonna build drones. As you can tell, he's a micro god. Oh my god, as the roaches file through. There is an argument to be made of killing your own roach horn and rebuilding it somewhere at this stage, but... Let's get some of those overseers. How much larva do we have? We need a couple more injects. Just rotate through. I'm just going to go through. You can click on the rocks through the fog of war. All right, this isn't an RTS from 2022. It's an RTS from the 2000s, back when we put any effort into them. Uh, so you can already queue up the rock. We'll take a look. And remember, like, I'll back off if I see something complicated. Well, we finished that Lunker Den. Oh, there's his army. Blinding Cloud. I mean... We're gonna use the Blinding Clouds here. Nobody can see. Just keep using it. It was a little bit of a mistake to use the first ones and run through it. There's a viper in my control group. I don't know. Oh, it's over there. Well, we finished 3-3, three, three, but 3-3 three, three wasn't really a relevant factor in the fight. We're going to right-click till we get close, and then 8-click. Right-click and 8-click. Because roaches are... They are... Uh, they don't have a ton of rank. <laughs> it's not really their thing. And if you want to just attack, you can hold position, and they'll just attack whatever's in range here. Not always the best option, because you might get stuck in a less than ideal spot, but... And this is why, like, even one or two tanks is super dangerous if you don't have vipers. Winter, have you stopped building anything to try to deflate your APM? Yes. Though, arguably he could have left a while back, so... That mineral cluster's mined out. Alright. Some more roaches. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I We've done it! We've reached Arbitrary Platinum! Wow. It seems to be affecting everyone. 
Everyone. There, I've not met a single player between bronze and masters. Most of them bronze. Like, with the league skin. Remember, it's just a skin. It's not the MMR. It is... This is not good, Bobby. Bobby the intern. This is not... This isn't good. It's not... It's, it's, it's not great. It Honestly, I think it's better if everyone's bronze than if people get to masters. Because that one is going to stress people out. Yeah, silver is just people who got promoted enough from their MMR to technically get out of bronze. Yeah, it's bad though. It is bad. We're gonna we're gonna break it down. We got questions. We're gonna take Twitch chat questions and dispense wisdom at the end. And we're not done for those watching live and and for those on YouTube. I mean, there are chapters you can skip over if you're boring and sad. Um, but that's okay. That's why you're watching this, right? So, uh, like and subscribe. But what's the summary so far? We are now effectively platinum. Um, we've learned the value of queens, larva, creep, um, in that order as well. Now, queens are what get you the larva. And creep is what allows you to use whatever comes out of that larva in an efficient manner. Creep in and of itself, that's one of the... I, it, I have avoiding bad habits at bronze here. And now all of these apply to everything, but these are the basic focuses as you move up. Uh, and I think diamond plus is just... Or arbitrary diamond plus is just doing all of these things better. There is not, in my experience, uh, a big, like mechanical or knowledge increase in diamond or masters or even gm players like the details yes but the the main ideas some people very much will get to diamond or even masters without learning half this stuff but um most people will especially the ones that improve rather quickly and consistently will have most of these skills so the bad habits we're avoiding, which is specific to Zerg, is getting caught up building things like too many Zerglings, which simply don't hit up, which invalidates them in a lot of early game scenarios, uh, and are not an efficient use of your larva. Um, with creep spreading, which creep spread is great, but if you have creep spread and no units or upgrades, not as good. While creep spread helps, unless you're maxed out, or close or spending your minerals as well as possible it is not the priority it is a good thing to have especially one or two outside of the main bases but at the same time it is not uh, your top priority as for basic scouting with your overlords as well your first overlord always heading towards that natural against zerg you pull it back a bit because queens exist um but otherwise on most maps you got that little pervert pillar in it this is this is me putting an overlord on it. This is what this is. Okay? That. And then against Protoss at the natural. And random, I think it's a good default. Because cannon rushes. Which we have not really been cheesed tonight. I got cheesed way more playing games in Masters than I have been in in the uh, bronze to bronze gold league. Which annoys me, but I guess that's life. So, um, I was hoping we get cheesed a bunch, but there's been almost no cheese. Maybe, maybe, I like to think, I'm going to take some credit, that, that people are taking the new season to heart. As you've seen, some people literally watching the low APM challenge. But we definitely saw some, some focused players who are doing basic macro builds, and then some less basic macro builds. But anyways, I'm getting off track. So those overlords, first overlord, natural. Do they have it? Do they not? Second Overlord, anti-cheese, essentially. And then against Zerg, it goes to their third base location as partially an anti-cheese, because if they're taking a third, that doesn't rule out their cheesing, but that's also a potential attack path Zerglings could take. And then from there, your Overlords just kind of spread out. Drones versus not drones. Okay, are they on one base? Are you sure? And if they are, you don't want to go over 30 without finding out what they're doing. If they are on two base... You don't want to stop before 40 unless you know for sure an attack is coming. You can usually get away with up to 40, 
uh, and three hatcheries, as we showed. A lot of players will see, like, for example, like, they'll see four Marines and a command center. And those four Marines will poke the Overlord, because it wasn't quite in the right spot. This is very specific, but also very common scenario. And then immediately, that Zerg player will build two Spine Crawlers and 12 Zerglings, because, oh my god, he has Marines. Now, four unstimmed, uncombat, shielded Marines that are just going to hop in that bunker that the Overlord sees are not going to kill you. And also, by the way, you have Queens. And that's part of why we were going with the gasless until three minutes build to just not even get Zergling speed. It isn't an efficient build. It's literally for us to not get Zergling speed, not even pretend to get Zergling speed, because Zergling speed is... We're not there yet, okay? We're not there. Um, even going to Platinum. Maybe, occasionally, I will open up with it. It is the higher level build, but it is not necessary at this stage. Um... And then late game army and control. Vipers. Vipers, 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 Vipers. Very good. Um, all the annoying units, all the annoying standard units are countered by Vipers. The annoying specific units are mostly countered by Queens. What am I talking about? Uh, what are the annoying specific units? Widowmines, uh, like early Widowmines, Dark Shrine, Oracle, Void Ray, even maybe Mutas. Um, those are countered by queens, maybe a spore or two. Whereas the annoying later game units, siege tanks, uh, mass void ray or even carrier, um, lurkers, um, battle cruisers to some extent, these are all countered in whole or in part by vipers. And while it seems like a high APM move, negating... Uh, 30 to 50 army supply during a fight for the cost of half a dozen actions is a lot cheaper than losing 20 more roaches and having to build them, APM-wise and mineral-wise. It is much more worth it to get two or three good blinding clouds and take a fight than to just smash 20 more roaches into the wall and kill one tank. Not that you've ever done that. So, uh, while it might seem like a lot of advanced micro it really is uh it really is actually simpler when you think about it a little bit though not as conducive to using the select all army hockey which i think is more of why people don't like vipers but now uh important questions and comments that you guys made yes you youtube uh from the last video uh, Jenny says, your videos are always too loud. To which I say, I do, um, sorry. Which is, I mean, that's quite a comment to make, right? Uh, and then serious. Why so? Uh, should creep spreading be more of a focus now that they can only transfuse on creep? Queens, of course. Or is it relatively minor for us low MMR plebeians? Um, plebeian, plebeians. Plebeians? I don't know how you pronounce that, but it's there twice. So, hashtag Yas Queens, spelled in a certain way that... Okay. So, creep spread... The priorities for creep spread have not changed. You want at least one or two tumors, uh, which is a weird sentence to say now that I say it out loud. Um, you want at least... Creep spread between your main and your natural. You want it at least a screen away from your natural and your third. Which means one or two more. Um, past that, honestly, your queen shouldn't be out there. You shouldn't, like, where are you going? What's out there? Why do they need to... What, what are you doing? All right, worry about what's happening at home. Okay, domestic policy is more relevant here. So the priorities have not changed. Getting basic creep between your bases and then maybe as you can a little further out without focusing on dozens but maybe one or two creep tumors um that is still the same it just is slightly more important especially in your main base to have your main base covered one helps for vision two you don't want to be caught in that one little spot not able to transfuse against the liberator the battle cruiser whatever so uh just making sure that that second set of queens gets that done so you don't have to worry about it 
I lose to uh, Sheng Chen says, I lose to silly cheese like DTs or cannon rushes. It used to frustrate me so much and rage quit. Yep. That's, yep. I agree. It He says used to. So that implies no longer does. Not sure what else the implication is, but I like to think he's now starting to, to learn how to deal with it. Uh, so good luck. I, and then Slaughterific says, I used to do hatch, uh, always do hatch literally first. I'm surprised it was fine till plat. Well, we've gotten a plat doing hitch literally all, hatch literally always first. The simple thing is, especially in Legacy of the Void, which I feel like I have to keep saying because so many people are coming back. You tell me, are you coming back from Wings of Liberty, Heart of the Swarm? From, oh wait, it was Legacy of the Void. It was four years ago. It feels like it should have been Wings of Liberty, but actually it's been over 10 years since Wings of Liberty, or at least since Wings of Liberty came out. Wow, I'm old. Maybe not all of that, but um, in many cases, except for the most spicy of cheddar, uh, getting a hatchery is actually a better defensive tool because you now have a larva. Even against early pools, sometimes a hatchery can be better than going pool first. This is because now you have the larva, the potential to build queens or spine crawlers on the low ground. So hatch first is not, it's kind of like how building a nexus is, well, very directly for Protoss. Building a nexus earlier is safer than building it later because that way it's done. And one, it has more HP, obviously. And two, you can get shield battery overcharge. The same thing is true, but less directly. You also have creep, which denies one, building things near your hatchery. And two, makes it easier for your important units to move around. So hatch first is not greedy. It is standard. The only time you you need to think about going for an earlier pool is ultra cheese. Not ultra lisks, like they're walling off your ramp with pylons or there are barracks in your natural kind of cheese. Those are the pretty much the only exceptions um, to that particular rule. At Winter Starcraft. That's me. Uh, Rowan says, I have a very technical problem with Zerk. Well, those are most of the problems with Zerk. Picked it up because of the low... Okay. Ah. So, is that the acronym? Low AP... The la la lap, -um lap MC. Yes. The low APM challenge. <laughs> it's weird, because it's adding an acronym... It's an acronym sandwich. Because <laughs> APM was already... <laughs> anyway. That's why it's messing with my brain. Um, and it's been going decent, thanks to you. Anyways. Often, there's a Terran tank. Which, you know... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pushing my second. Um, so I want to send newly morphed troops... From third and first to help. But if I rally, then they just walk into fire and die without shooting, which is bad. And if I manage to A-move, they still come in piecemeal. So you can individually rally hatcheries, for one. Um, if there are probably larger issues with your game plan, if there's a, a Terran tank walking up to your natural uh, and... You didn't have anything to deal with it. But that's that does happen. It does happen. It's one of those spicy... Who proxies a tank, right? So maybe try against the AI changing the rally point of your hatcheries um, individually. You can still build off of all of them at the same time. You just got to be careful not to change the rally point. Or alternatively, when you build off of the larva at a hatchery... You can just click that, like, control click on those eggs and rally them to a different location. Um, it's not a super elegant... It's always been an issue for Zerg. Uh, it's always been a bit of a struggle to when getting pushed... I, I reference... Um, it should be on YouTube now, I think. Cure versus DRG. Um, where Cure kind of just did a tank push right up the center. And DRG keeps trying to rally in from every side and eventually gets ground down because it's so hard to bring all those units together. It is an issue, um, but individual rally points 
would help you and DRG a little, to be honest. <laughs> uh, so that, like, it's not easy, but that's my tip. So winter is the reason the plushies are out of stock, and I had to wait five minutes. I don't know uh, what you're talking about, okay? There is no... I take no responsibility for this. There, There is no evidence of any of this happening. So you can take your accusations and get the fuck out. Okay. Are there no Terran plushies? Uh, I don't, I, actually there aren't, which is a major downside. Um, not that I know of, otherwise, how did I miss it? Opponent doesn't rush. Winter, we're gonna need vipers. Brian asks, so the big question is, <laughs> do you always need vipers? If so, how do you use them with low APM? It really seems like they should be APM intensive. I actually, I did, I did see these questions before, and I made an effort so far today to answer that. It's because not so much that they aren't APM intensive, but you got to think about what good usage of Vipers is preventing. Even spending 20 APM on Vipers can help prevent needing to build 30 more roaches in a minute, as well as microwing any amount of 30 more roaches. Makes it a lot easier for you to just come swinging in with a bunch of roaches and hydras. Takes a little practice, takes a lot of practice. Vipers are pretty vulnerable. They don't have an attack, so they will just glide over whatever anti-air they have. But when used even decently, not great, like just decently, just build more vipers is the summary. If your vipers aren't doing it, I think we both know you can afford three or four more vipers. Give it a shot. Okay, <laughs> like I don't think, I don't think you're using your vi like if if quality doesn't solve the problem, quantity can fill in a little. Um, of course, that does slightly contradict my entire point, but uh, I hope you get what I'm saying. Um, so the so Matthew says the big no no same one same one. Should I worry about having queens injecting at every hatch in 5 plus base games or focus on a few? What's a good queen to Hellion, Marine, and Medivac ratio for defense? Um, so, your, just your first three bases is probably pretty good. I make a habit of adding macro hatches in my main or around my natural. And that, I think, can simplify it because then you can just inject extra hatches in your main. Honestly past four bases it get, does get difficult to manage especially consistently but i think three bases plus macro hatches with um a queen on each one about and you can use whatever extra energy and, and queue up some injects on whatever hatch they're near on top of that at least one queen for every hatch you build for defense of course you could always pull all the queens for defense which is what many pros will do um, but minimum, and especially if they're going like Hellions or Battle Cruisers, like why not? Why stop building them? All right, ten queens is when you can maybe think about stopping. But they are straight up, especially defensively, better supply and mineral wise than almost any other unit. There's literally no downside to building more queens, which is the big complaint um, in general about queens is that they kind of fill. They wear every hat. They're your macro. They're your defense. They were, until recently at least, your offense. Like, uh, they're your utility and creep spread. Like, <laughs> And they have similar DPS to a Hydra, and they don't cost gas or larva. So, like, the answer is just keep building them if you don't know if you have enough. Um, but at least, like, one per hatch, plus one for defense. Kiflam says... A very Zerg question. I always drop my mules on the biggest looking minerals. I assume those have more minerals. My intent is to keep as many patches as possible to delay the need to move workers. 
One. That's Taryn. Two. I enjoyed the comment, so that's why it's here. Uh, so, there are four. This is useful inf and also brings up some useful information for everyone. There are four large mineral patches and four small mineral patches. The large mineral patches have 1,500 small mineral patches. I want to say 800. I think I'm 90% I'm 90 sure that's correct. Uh, it's either 800 or 900. So the, the close patches are the big ones, um, the ones close to your base. Um, I'm not advocating for mineral stacking. I'm just saying those are the ones that are going to mine out later on. Uh, and they do have the right idea that mules do mine faster. They don't mine more. They just mine faster. So, um, but they do have the, uh, in my opinion, the wrong idea. Because it, it's the same amount of minerals. You should be wanting to move your workers to a new base. You don't want to have more workers in more different bases. The same, you'll have eventually the same amount of minerals. So, uh, I would say whatever makes sure you can mine with mules the fastest. I wouldn't think too hard about it. The big patches are fine, but also don't, like, maybe think more about moving your workers more quickly as opposed to trying to find ways to delay that, because that's not a good long-term strategy. This is true for all the races. Um, just for general, a general rule is you will start mining out of those smaller patches as non-Terran with mules around eight minutes in an average game seven to eight minutes is when they start getting lower mining out the rest follow at about 12 minutes following bases fully saturated usually take a little less because remember you don't start with all the workers um so following bases are about six minutes of fully mining to mine out the smaller patches and about eight to ten for the larger ones once again details are slightly relevant, though not so much. And this is why we consider the late game to be around that 20 minute mark, because that means you've mined out of your main, your second, um, and you're starting on your third, usually, uh, in a higher level game. Um, that's when the minerals go from having too many to too few on most maps in most situations. So just, if you're expanding on average, uh, every few minutes in the early game and every five minutes or so in the later game, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's usually not a concern until it really is. <laughs> Thanks, Winter. Loving the series, heart. Is there ever a time to use infestors? Are they another fun unit for co-op? Yes, there's a time to use infestors. Um, but most of that time is to neural parasite Thors. <laughs> And I think Vipers fill much of the role that Infestors could up until, like, Diamond Plus. Um, infestors are very good, but much like Protoss in general, trying to control two-plus spellcasters is already a massive struggle. And the Infestors don't give you that huge return on investment. And they're a lot harder to use and are more fragile than Vipers for a similar cost. Um, but Neural Parasite can definitely make a big difference against mech though arguably not as much difference as vipers right like, so infestors are good but they're kind of that added very that, that added later game as opposed to vipers which definitely help your mid game army and now frank has um a question about the gasless opener it seems like you float a hatch worth of minerals since you don't have drones mining gas and don't spend resources on link speed, should you maybe use those to plop down a macro hatch? More hatches equal more queens and more larva. Uh, since you're skipping link speed, is it valuable to go pool first and get queens faster? Um, or skip building links altogether, uh, since slow links are extra useless? Uh, the first four to six links are for, one, dealing with early shenanigans, zergs that build links, reaper, adept, stuff like that. And then if they don't have those, send them across the map scouting. And by scouting, I mean you see what's on their ramp or at their natural. Okay. Like, uh, and that usually gives you most of the information for the early game. I don't see a problem like, try it out. Uh, if you have 300 minerals and you haven't ta you've already taken your third, build a macro hatch. You're already building queens, drones, your third, overlords. 
You still got 300 minerals? It happens. It sounds like a lot. It happens, though. Macro hatch. No downside. I think macro hatches, even by me, are underutilized. There's like a, a stigma against them, kind of like dropping supply depots as Terran. Um, where back in the day, when mules used to mine extra on the gold, and in general they mined significantly more, about 30% more, dropping a supply, like an extra supply depot on top of a supply for double supply, was like, oh my god, what a macro noob. But now it is marginally less minerals, depending on how you measure it, than what a mule will mine. Um, there are definitely arguments to be made. Like, if you're supply blocked, it is much better, in most cases, to drop supply than drop a mule. I think the same is true for macro hatches. A lot of people don't actually realize this, but larva inject only gives three larva. In Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm, it gave four which is more, significantly more, 33% more. So that means you're getting less larva with more minerals. So macro hatches are, uh, there is a better argument for them. I mean, you can queue up injects, which you couldn't do in Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm. So there's a little bit of extra leeway there if, you have, if you're not perfect on that inject timing. It used to be every second you weren't injecting a hatch, you were missing out. So that's why Zergs had to have this perfect rotation of every 30 seconds, inject, 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 creep, spread, creep, spread, creep, spread, build overlords, overlords, and then you got four seconds to do anything else, inject, inject, and, and that was how Zerg was. And it's still kind of like that, but uh, not nearly as much so. Um, and, and generally with Legacy of the Void, Chrono Boost used to do uh, a similar amount more, uh, as well, and you could really speed out, you would really see the difference, especially in Protoss versus Protoss, of course, between someone sinking all their Chrono Boost into, like, Warp Gate versus Probes. Um, so, just in general, these mechanics. Uh, this is a very long-winded way of saying, build that macro hatch. Build two. It probably won't hurt. That is not sarcastic. It is, it is true. Speaking of sarcasm, delusional mystic. Don't know much about these queens or how they operate, but I sure do enjoy when the expert on camera savages the novices with words and actions. Glad you enjoy. So, with that, we're going to play probably about five more games. We'll see how long that takes. And, uh... Uh, okay, I'm going to take this time. This this part will be explaining the situation. Because one, it's been a while for the people watching live. And two, for you, as something so I can timestamp this and say what the situation is. So, here's what's going on. You see, I am in Bronze 1. Despite, at the end of last season, being in Gold 2. I played a placement match. I was at 2600 MMR at the end of last season. I'm now at 2,900 after today. So, what happened? Bobby the Intern, probably not his name, or her name, or its name, if there is one. Um, this has been a... The, the ranks are fucked up. Um, the MMR is fine. The MMR has always been fine. The number on MMR and the matchmaking based on that matchmaking rating has always been good. Um, sure, you'll get the issues of people artificially inflating or deflating it, which, I mean, here we are, but it is the rank applied to the account that is fucked right now. So, there are two ranks, essentially, that we've seen on the ladder. Bronze and Masters. Mostly Bronze. Occasionally Masters. And everybody is put in those ranks despite whatever their MMR is. It's just how it is. It's happened to some extent before. It's usually fixed within a week or two of the season. Um, it does not affect who you're matched against unless... No, it doesn't. It just doesn't. You're still matched. If you're 3K, you're matched against people around 3K, 2K, 5K, 69K. It's a lot. Um, but so it's essentially just the wrong league portrait. It's annoying. It's kind of demotivating. Um, you may see some Masters players, which will have their MMR listed next to them conveniently. You may get placed into Masters. You can try leaving League, and maybe it'll fix it. Probably not. 
uh, because we did try that today. But until Bobby gets back on the server uh, or whatever, welcome to Bronzer Masters, low APM challenge. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of where we are at the moment. But have no fear. I have arbitrarily declared some leaks. Um, so last season to get to platinum was approximately 2,800 MMR. So 2,800 MMR is platinum. 3,400 MMR is diamond. 4,300 is masters. Okay. Those are your leaks. Uh, below that, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the silver gold threshold. I actually don't remember that one. Um, 23, 22, something like that. Uh, so maybe I can find an actual graphic from last season, but you can, when the leagues are fixed and I have confidence that they will be, they have been before. It's a recurring issue. They are, the problem does not seem to be fixed, but there is a bandaid or something they slap on occasionally. That is probably where you will be. So do not be discouraged by placing higher or lower than you thought. It's inspiration to get a little bit better and not even worry about getting promoted to the next league because you're technically in bronze anyways. So, with that said, back to the bronze league. And by that I mean platinum. Which means we are uh, now a platinum zerg, which I have strong feelings on in general. And the APM limit, based on those averages, 105. Passing that triple digit mark. Still plenty to build roaches. Maybe add in a little more creep spread. Uh, a little quicker inject. Stuff like that. Uh, my opponent is bronze. As you can see. <laughs> Everyone's equal until you look at the, the MMR after the game. Zerg versus Zerg. Second Overlord is going to that uh, third base location. I mean, there are multiple third bases he could potentially take. I'm gonna go get my hatch. We're gonna focus a little more on actual timings. I'm going to be adding in now in the Platinum League. Attacking before maxing out with Vipers, potentially. I know we were doing some of that, but only when provoked. Of course, Zerg versus Zerg is also... Like, mirror matchups in general. Every, ma every mirror matchup is more aggressive. Because having one single upgrade... Like, there is no asymmetry. There is no counter. A lot of the times, the counter is just having more of the same unit with better upgrades. Whether it's roaches, whether it's zealots, marines. Um, this is why a lot of people aren't huge fans of mirror matchups. Historically, there's been a lot of Ling Baneling in, in Zerg vs. Zerg. I no longer think that's particularly necessary, though is sometimes a part of it. Because you start with such a high economy and expand so fast, you can just wall off and take two bases. Like, um, there is, like, you can almost always shut down anything but, like, a pool first, zergling all in. So it's not as much of a concern. Back in the day, um, you started with a lower economy, so small amounts of lower economy units like zerglings were much more popular. All right, so we're just gonna see if he expanded. Yep, there's some creep there. Let's see if he's building a queen. Why are you not building a queen? Start your queen. Let's see if we can watch the queen start. There you go. Hatchery having a little freak out session there. It happened. And you know what? We're doing a two base, so I'm gonna take the gases at 2.30. I'm 
This is for a two base plus one roach speed. I, I hesitate to say all in timing. Need more right. overlords. Don't really know how. Or... This is enough zerglings to fight the queen potentially, and somewhat awkwardly. All out of energy. He's got his lair started, which is uh, and he's got two gases. Which is an interesting scenario. We're gonna get an evolution chamber. That means he doesn't even have zergling speed. I'm gonna start my lair. Here's what I think it is. I think he's going Mutas. But it's already a little late to try to go zerglings with speed. So what we're gonna do is just a little more focus on creep spread. I'm gonna pull an overlord back here. All out of Not enough overlords. Don't got the minerals. I'm gonna get that plus one. My Rotorn's already a little late. You wanna start it a little after the lair finishes. I'm gonna get a creep tumor in the main as well. We're gonna go up to 46 drones. Why? Because that way I can have two build those extra um what's the word? What what is my brain head doing? Extractors. <laughs> we got there. Not enough energy. I built an overseer cuz I don't want to commit to a huge number. He's upgrading there, which I don't think he would do if he was not going for... He does have a spire on the way. Alright, so it is Muta's. Ah! He got it. Well, at least we don't have to worry about it anymore. So now we got hard decisions. It's almost done. By the time I get across the map, it'll be done. We'll make more queens. I know. <laughs> like, wow, he's gonna do something crazy. No. The queens will defend until I get hydras with upgrades. That spire was not done. I don't need spore crawlers until the mutas are threatening. Which, I have at least 30 or so more seconds before I need them. It doesn't sound like a lot. That could be a, a lot of difference in the long run. Don't got the minerals. Let's get those spores. I'm gonna get two in the main, because going into the main is a lot more trouble in general. He was upgrading out of the Evo chamber, which is an interesting call. I'm actually gonna get another spore here. So, there's always the risk. I'm gonna send one roach out, because here's the here's the small risk. That he's just gonna build a bunch of roaches. He never builds even a single muta. Builds a bunch of roaches, and then I'm sitting here building a bunch of spines and maybe hydras, which aren't that great on their own against roaches. Here come the queens. Like, let's see if he's thinking too hard. That's the question. Yep, looks like he canceled the spire, I bet. And went for a bunch of roaches. Yep, he canceled and went... There you go. That's exactly what we are looking for. Can't deal with the uh, spines now. Remember those... Wait, those queens can transfuse on my creep! You son of a... I mean, not if they're dead, though. Um... That is a that is a pretty big concern there. <laughs> so time is on my side. Here. The longer this goes on, the more reinforcements I get. I'm getting upgrades. So he tried to, essentially, he swerved onto the same road I was on, assuming I would freak out about the Mutas. 
as many players do. Right? They see a spire and suddenly the rest of the game, the impending threat of 38 mutas in your main, is uh, what's making the difference there. <laughs> but I just ended up having, and, and that's what the advantage looks like, is the, the worker count there. Because I knew if he's rushing lair, there is no threat. I can build as many drones as I want. He does not know the same thing. He does not have that knowledge. All right. No knowledge. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. And we are now at the level where a lot of players will, will be thinking too hard. Before this, they were thinking not at all, for the most part, which is more dangerous, in my opinion. Um, the not at all thinkers. They're just doing their build, regardless of what they see. But he knows, he knew I saw the spire. So he tried to mind game me. But the, the counter is just scouting twice. Like, trust but verify. If the spire is not done and the mutas aren't out, it's, there are no mutas yet. Like, though the threat of mutas is there. So, just everything in moderation. He started the spire. No, the spire was mostly done so he wanted to go mutas he just didn't like that i saw it and then he kind of panicked that was the difference just seeing the lair that early doesn't leave you with many options going lair that quick isn't even good for going roaches why because you don't have the economy to really get enough roaches to worry about roach speed so It leaves you with Mutas, Nidus. Occasionally, somebody will try some sort of crazy, like, rush to hive or something, but that's very rare. The in in descending order, Mutas, Nidus, Terrible Roach all in, Lurkers. Um, and then just ignoring they have a lair and pretending they didn't build one because it was an accident. Is there a tutorial for that ZVZ build? Every replay is in the chat and on the video. The account to download any replay sorted by matchup is available. Like, no, no, no. I want somebody to talk to me and tell me what to do instead of learning for myself. Well, I mean, I'm trying. I think... Maybe, so with the replay, as you've seen me do with uh, Angry Coach, for one, but also for pro players, uh, allows you to look at the perspective of the player. The StarCraft replay system is the best replay system I've seen in any game, ever. Um, e down to being able to take command of the players, like you're in an alternate universe version of the game. Um, but you can see what they're doing, what they're focusing on at your own speed, essentially. Uh, and that is like you can pause, write it down or whatever it is people do to learn um, and go back. And like the, the stipulation is I don't think all my builds here are like this is the exact template to copy every game and it's done perfectly by definition because in an attempt like honestly i'm trying to reconcile the idea of keeping my apm super low with the general theme of doing a good build in order to do a perfect build for you to emulate i would probably not be reaching that apm limit i'm not saying you can't do a build like this without way more apm i'm saying to get like that perfect example would take more you don't need the perfect example, you just need the idea. But remember, it's not, this is exactly the supply to do everything. It is, these are the broad strokes. This is a general idea, the general direction. Uh, I do want to add that disclaimer, because if people take the builds from this series, know I am either intentionally or somewhat unintentionally not doing it at 100%. Because 100 but 80% will easily get you to platinum with 100% win rate. So, that is the point. I think I've made my point. Now I'm going in circles.
you can't see the mouse cursor, but you can see everything that gets selected and how much of it actively. So while you can't, and you can also rewatch the VOD if you really need to. But you can see every effect the mouse cursor has, essentially, even if you can't see the cursor. And that is ha that is the genius of StarCraft replays, because it's technically just a text file read by the editor, and it replays the game via that. It's like, these are the coordinates of the selection. This is why replay files are measured in kilobytes. Uh... They're not like a recorded video, which could, like, be hundreds of megabytes or, or gigs. Like, no. Like, my replay folder is over a gig. And that should impress you. Okay. If I combined all my replay folders from all the PCs and hard drives, it'd probably be several. You should be- now be impressed. Okay. That's a lot of replays. And, like, well, I download replay packs from pro tournaments and games and stuff. Like, I'm not playing all of them. It's, I don't know, like, by text file, I mean it's reading, like, a certain editor code. I don't mean necessarily literally a .txt file. I'm, once again, like, this entire goddamn series... I'm trying to translate into the common denominator. It's like, but Winter, I'm actually an expert in these things. Imagine how I feel when you speak. How large is the average replay pack from a tournament? Uh, I mean, the average pro replay is probably around 150 kilobytes. So, you just, however many games in the tournament, though, you know you got a, a spicy one when it's like 700 or 50. I'll be honest, that is part of what I use to determine if games might be, like, either worth casting or I'm gonna have to set aside extra time for. I try not to spoil myself, but I usually have the general gist. If a replay file is significantly higher than 150, it's either a very long or very dramatic game. If it's under 150, it is probably not long or dramatic. It doesn't necessarily direct like a game where they're fighting like like for example, Clem versus Max Pags. We'll sometimes have these huge replay files in 15-minute games. Whereas like I don't know. Hero Marine versus Showtime. Same replay files. Nearly double the game length. Because, like, that's just the type of players. That's how many, like, units are being created and dying. Like. Also, something that throws it off is the more observers in the game, it increases the size of the replay file. Because it technically tracks what all the observers are looking at. So, like, for the pro, like, the top, top, top pro games, which Sarah is sometimes in, it is tracking the, it's not just tracking the players, it's tracking the observer cameras, which for many of these tournaments have, like, five or six different ones for different languages and different casting and all that, right? <laughs> so, it, you can also use that as like a director, which I do sometimes when I want to do a lot of this with my hands, I, though most of the time I do it myself. Um, it is a learned skill, I think. It uh, Otherwise you end up with like a Rainer observing. Which, yeah, good luck with that. Like, uh, <laughs> ooh, some multi-pronged harass Well, we'll go see what we can get done. How many drones? I built a few too many overlords. Yeah. More hatcheries. Right click, eight click. 
but he doesn't have combat shields, so I'm just gonna right click. That is too much, by the way. Too many tanks. We run away. Hive tech. Hydra done. We'll get 80 drones ish. More roaches. Where did my queen for the main go? Oh, I think I screwed it up. I did get a little distracted on the uh, replay conversation. I kind of went into autopilot mode, which is why there are so many creep tumors. <laughs> like I said, uh, that's why I don't think necessarily these build orders are something to copy word for word, such as they are, is because we're going with the general themes, but none of these games are like the perfect template, I don't think. You, it, you might be like, isn't it easier to not spread all that creep or build all those units? No. Not after several thousand Devil's games. Complete. Several tens of thousands of games, I guess. The reflex is once creep gets past a certain point, my eyes see it on the minimap and I go spread it. All right? I spread it. When it's ripe, I spread it. All right? That, that's just who I am at this point. The idea is you don't even think about it. Make some more hydras. Shift click in. The vipers. That's a little bit of everything here. Mineral cluster depleted. Is this not a good place for fungals? I mean, it's a good place for fungals. It's a better place for vipers and markers. Fungals take more micro than vipers and are less reliable. Because if you don't follow it up, then they just heal. Like, all the medevacs just heal. Vipers can both use blinding cloud, abduct, and parasitic bomb for the medevacs. We're gonna... Which, of course, is also helpful when lurkers are involved. Of which, we did have some money banked up. We're gonna back off. I don't need that base. I don't need that base. I can take this, this, this. We'll burrow, unburrow, another parasitic bomb, another burrow. Give me that. Unburrow. So, I have my Roach, Hydras, and Lurkers. If you have them on the same hotkey, the selection defaults to the Lurker Burrow. So you can have them all on the same... It's... Not ideal. Like, the ideal would be having a separate Lurker key, but... I'm trying to minimize the amount of... So it's just two control groups. We got Lurkers. We got Ground. We got Vipers. That's it. And obviously, you don't always want to run all your lurkers up for this. Get back here. Depleted that mineral cluster.
So you can always just box them. But is if I had infestors, they would take priority over the lurkers when it comes to spell casting as well. Uh, so that is another reason, like, you don't want to avoid building a unit just because it's going to make it harder to control other units, but, like, that's not the worst reason either, so. Mineral cluster depleted. So, this is a wild turn. What do I mean? What's going to happen now? is uh he's gonna try to drop everywhere looks like we got a big direct attack that's a lot so instead of saying you know the marines are a bad idea he, he quadrupled down and now essentially only has marines which is not the ideal counter to lurkers. Um, building more hydras. I may need to build a few more lurkers soon. So what is for you Terrans? Liberators, ghosts, um, tanks are okay. Essentially anything but marines. Like, almost anything else would be better. Let's drag the tank down. You can actually click on it as long as you see it firing. He built a lot of bears. Oh my. Mutation complete. Man, I wish I hadn't seen that. Just gonna run up here. Got forces under attack out there. Mineral cluster depleted. That is optimism. I'm just gonna clear this up. I sent a few 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 hydras out. Depleted that mineral cluster. Well, the main's gone. I bet he has a planetary here, but the vipers come in again. Got a binding cloud. Guys are exhausted. Ah. It's kind of funny. Like, so I'll be honest, I'm going to. Right now, the APM limit is 105. I find myself closer to the gold league limit of 90. Why? Because I'm allowing myself to do a little more earlier on makes it easier for me to put myself in a position where all I have to do is cast a few spells and A move. 
so this is the kind of downside of the low APM challenge is if I had a little higher to start, it actually ends up being lower in the long run because it allows you to set yourself up to be further ahead in the mid game. Um, but, and that is why it seems to be going down as opposed to up. I mean, and the, the faster you can, that, that's the key to mechanics as well, is once you realize what you're supposed to be doing to the point where, like I was, you're not even thinking about it when it comes to, um, when it comes to injects, creep spread, you actually will do it quicker and do it with less actions because you're no longer like, what do I need to click on? Where do I need to put it? How do I need to do it? No, it, it comes second nature. So the more you play, the less APM it takes to do basic things because you're not misclicking. You're not forgetting certain parts. You're not uh, missing prerequisites, uh, whatever they might be. So. Not enough overload. And that is why I I advocate for these very general builds as opposed to a very specific because if you teach a man to build he can get to platinum. But if you teach a man to build he can become a salty diamond. I have confidence. Fear of Alt F4 accidentally. Here's what Alt F4 does in SC2. It's got Alt F4 protection. Maybe his didn't. Um. Maybe, maybe for some reason his didn't. Uh, he was AFK. That's what happened. He was AFK and just came back. Apparently. Well, he built a probe. Okay, well. This is an AoE 4, alright? You're already in the game. You can't go get your pizza rolls. You can't warm up those hot pockets. From when you press the press the play button, even though it's 3 a.m., you're very likely to be in a game within a minute. That's part of the stress. And that game, usually, especially below the highest leagues, is going to be pretty close in MMR. We're within 30 there. It's actually insane how short the queue times are. Like, not to brag, but usually my queue times are like a minute. Unless there's a couple people around my level playing. Because there are simply less people at Masters Plus. Just the sheer number is lower. Even if they usually play more, the sheer number is lower. So, But I am kind of impressed by how quick we're finding games with different people of nearly exactly the same MMR. I mean, I shouldn't be. There's still hundreds of thousands of people playing. A hundred thousand just on NA. All it takes is a few dozen playing at this time. It's a 1v1 game. That's the struggle. That's just 1v1, by the way, those numbers. In case you didn't watch all the numbers videos... And I think us 
North Americans. And yes, the Europeans as well. But for the last couple seasons, for better or worse, NA has played more games than EU. This reverses a trend. Throughout historically SC2, Europe has had marginally more games. Like like maybe 5 to 10% more games played. And players on it. But the last couple seasons, NA has retaken uh, and had slightly more players and games. So Enough to be a significant trend difference. I'm not sure, like, it's approximately... Actually, it's slightly more players in the last season. I think having any hint of a patch may have helped. You tell me. <laughs> it's like, the meta will at some point. It might take a while. It's like other games are like, you only released three new uh, dungeons, 500 more skins, and like an entire new character. You call this a DLC? StarCraft 2. Balance patch with like the tiniest number changes on a relatively tiny handful of units that most people were never really affected by anyways. Oh my god, what a save! Two years have led up to this moment. How crazy. And here we are. Getting cheesed? I don't... Not enough overlords. He doesn't have an expand or a wall, but he did build a py Like, is this pylon the end of it? I, you can't have that many pylons at this stage. Need more overlords. Don't really know how. I'm definitely getting less focused, though, and I don't want to get to the point where I'm not even talking about the game anymore. So, what did I say? Five games? This is... We're gonna count the AFK. This is game four. We'll have one more fun game after this. But I'm, like, focusing on anything, let alone something like StarCraft for over three hours does take. I mean, good luck watching this video straight through over three hours and I actually paying attention, right? So, I find myself, when, when practicing, usually two and a half to three hours. Oh my god. Nope, this is the game. This is the game when the queens will march, the creep will spread, void rays will be driven from the field, and it will be, uh, hopefully, unless it's some sort of disaster, our last game for this platinum now episode of the low APM challenge. No, 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 this is the perfect opportunity. We're gonna build queens. Uh, queens, but they can't transfuse off of creep, so we will fight on the creep. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you the creep tricks. Hashtag creep tricks. Maybe, maybe not a hashtag. Your forces are under attack. Oh shit. One sec. Creep tricks after defending the void race. Hive cluster just popped out a queen. Post void ray creep creep tricks. Fuck. Anyways. Hey everybody, this is Brenda. Are you sad you can't transfuse off of creep? Now, with a low, low price of one drone and a bit of micro, you too can have creep wherever you want. Just force that drone to turn itself into a hatchery and then turn that hatchery inside out and quickly plop down that creep tumor and you can get creep wherever you want. No layer required. Wow! How exciting is that? The drone? We don't worry, it doesn't have feelings. And you can now creep spread with the best of them. Yes, try the drone counterplop strat today.
creep for everyone all the way to their base in approximately not that many seconds flat. You could get so much... Cr Did you know when you cancel a drone, you can build an evo chamber on it? Or even a... Sp well, not a... Sp you gotta do the spawning pool? Or a roach... Or a... Oh, the drone is freaking out. Ah, the roach warren? Or even a... A, a fucking spine crawler? Yeah, how exciting. Or you could just get even more creep. Wow, I love creep. Why do you take it away from me, Bob? Why would you do this? Queens are the best. This message brought to you by Queens. I'm Brenda, and I approve this message. More creep. Today. What happens when the creeps touch? Find out more on the next episode of Low APM Challenge. That mineral cluster's mined out. <laughs> well, we're not going to top that. Well, we had some... Don't try this at home. Uh, that guy, I think, was legitimately in his placement matches. He has been platinum eight times, but I bet they were... Oh, including last year. Okay, never mind. But he was quite platinum. Um, AKA bronze. But that'll wrap up the games for this episode of the Low APM Challenge. Uh, I hope um, you did enjoy. We'll take now rapid fire. I want rapid fire Twitch chat questions. I don't want the question segment at the end, though. Since we did the YouTube comments, we're, we're not going to have it. But remember, first, the season. Get your questions ready. Not yet, Twitch chat. Not yet. Now's your time, Sheba. Um, but the season two challenge. Ignore the the league and gain matchmaking rating for every... Okay, so I realize now it screws up my whole interpretation, but if you're under 2,000 MMR, five games a week, two to three K, 10 games a week, three to four K, 15 games, and at least 20 games a week for four K plus. That's the season two of 2022 challenge. Um, and by the time Bobby fixes the leagues, you tell me if you made any progress. I think, it, and just to be clear, it's better to play three or four games a day over a few different days than play them all at once. That's just how learning works. I mean, maybe cramming works for you, but that's not my to ourselves. We're not in school anymore because we're mostly too old for that. Um, but otherwise, uh, give it a shot and... Uh, tell me how you're doing. Use SC2 Replay Stats Training Center for things to focus on. You can use two replays on it a day for free. And then if you decide the uh, SC2 Replay Stats Elite, ooh, uh, that goes to maintaining the site. So um, apparently it is self-sufficient based on how many people have subscribed with Elite. So that's cool for SC2 Replay Stats, but help it in the future. Um, all right. So... I hope you enjoyed this road to platinum. Um, honestly, I think we're really nailing down a more comfortable style for Zergs. And it's hard. It's hard. It's so simple yet so complicated. That is the summary for Zerg. It's just very different than Terran and Protoss. But once you get a handle on it, it's a lot of fun. All right. Twitch chat. Rapid fire. Go. Stupid questions will just be banned. No questions asked, besides the stupid one. Okay, stupid questions that deserve to be banned. Not stupid questions. Just stupid questions are fine. Why do we not get five games? Because math is for nerds. Favorite boxed wine? Um, the cardboard.
Favorite box size. Large. Why, how, why come I can't infest command centers anymore? Because, Grandpa, it's called StarCraft II. Brood War was a long time ago. Why is Melee on Zerg split so far below the lowest tier unit and highest tier unit? I don't understand the question. Why can't queens fly? Grandpa, Zerg or shotgun? Good question. When should I mind game my opponents? Uh, most of the time you shouldn't because you'll probably end up mind gaming yourself because let's be honest, neither of you are particularly smart. What's your skincare secret? Never see daylight. Is 2v2 good? It's almost as good as 1v1. Can you build macro hedges instead of injecting? You can. It's not better. Both is better. It is not better than just injecting, but it isn't a terrible difference. Ultraling Bane good for A-moving? It's not terrible. It's not actually as good as you'd think, though, because Banelangs hit a bunch of things they shouldn't, and Ultras can't get anywhere on their own. If you were to design a set of ladder maps from all previous maps on the ladder, what would it be? That's a complicated question, and honestly, most of the maps recently especially look the same, and the ones that everybody liked, pro players hated because they were annoying and imbalanced. Uh, when you bring Ultra into the game, ideally as little as possible, but it's pretty good against Mass Marine Marauder, not as good as Lurkers. It's pretty good against, like, Mass Zealot Archon, not as good as Lurkers. Um... Mostly, as a great man once said, when, you, when you're really far ahead and you want to lose, you build Ultraless. It's slightly less true, though not that much so. Uh, favorite SC2 caster? I love Tastosis. Uh, the only casters I, I really learn from um, are Pig and Roddy, who are both significantly better than me, uh, especially at Protoss and Zerg. The only person I ever learned ZVZ from is Pig. So... Um, I mean, I guess Harstum, if we're considering it. Uh, not ZVZ, though. Uh, do you enjoy ski ball? No strong opinions. Are Ultras really that bad? No, but they're not great. Favorite story character? Swan. Um, can I make grilled cheese with mac and cheese? You can do whatever you set your mind to, so probably not. Should Lings be able to attack on move command? I don't understand the question, and I won't respond to it. Why is it rare to build Muta? Because they fucking die. Uh, if a race would obtain a cat-like unit, which race would it be? A lot of people think it would be Zerg. It's obviously Terran. Um, how to grow a left hand that can create 300 APM. If you grow another hand, is it your left? Have you heard of SC2 Probots? I've seen some of the AI stuff. I kind of would want to at least cast some of it, um, but I, I've never really looked that close into it. Uh, obviously outside of, like, Alpha Star. Uh, when do you decide to go Mutas instead of building up Lurker and Viper? Usually if they're very ground-focused, like Robo or Mass Factory units that aren't Thors, essentially. Uh, same goes for, like, Roach Stalemates uh, as well, but a lot of the time, like, they are more of an all-in or a game-ender as opposed to Lurker Viper, which is a safer choice. How big is Jim Raynor? Don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to. Uh, should I proxy all my Zerg tech in a random corner of the map to bait and outplay my opponent? Yes. Uh, if there would be a fourth race, what would it be like? Probably a lot less original than you think. Uh, what about going for Mass Overlord to cover the Zerg Mass Muta Strike for distraction? Um, I can't disagree with that statement. Uh, what do you think about SC2 in r slash place? Uh, I don't. Uh, how many pro players could you fit inside a big game? We haven't reached the number yet. Um, are we having karaoke today? I can't say no. Have you ever thought about how Zerg units are just throwing pieces of themselves? I've brought that up on multiple occasions. Favorite Star Trek? Deep Space Nine. Worst ladder map ever? That's a very hard question, and I don't remember the names. There were a lot. in Wings. If you rule out Wings of Liberty, it gets a lot harder. Why were you playing League yesterday? Because it's for Legends. Yesterday, April 1st, I played League of Legends, and now I'm addicted. Um, how long of a head start with Serral being AFK do you think you would need to be able to win? Um, assuming I couldn't just rush immediately with workers. We're just going to assume that. 45 seconds. 
that will give me a 50-50, maybe. It depends on the rest of the rules as well. Uh, on Roach Tech, in what case is plus one carapace better than plus one attack? Uh, it rarely is. On the, the time plus one carapace is better is if you're going Roach Ling, which is a real and common unit composition, but uh, carapace is almost always outdone by plus one attack because the attack upgrades scale with the amount of damage per attack, and Roaches do a significant amount. Why is the void called entropy? Plus one carapace is better against mutas. Don't upgrade your ground units to deal with mutas. Um, build units that shoot mutas, like queens. Boneless wings are a lie. They are nuggets. They're marketing. Don't tear and already have a cat-like unit. Predators in campaign. Well, they can have two. Their tigers and lions both exist. Why can't Lurker attack air? Geometry. Which of your Ling's plushie, which of your Ling plushies is your favorite? I'm not willing to say that out loud. I see a lot less Swarm Hose Nidus running in tournament. Any real reason? Nidus are a little more expensive than they were a while back. Um, they're a big investment, and people learning that queens can do almost as much. Lurkers, like, Swarm Hose just don't get much done, and they take a whole lot of micro, even at the highest level. Entropy, as I know it, means a degree of randomness. I don't think you have a degree in anything. Uh, how do sky toss units not crash into each other? Um, technology. Favorite type of meat? Zergling. Our overlord drops a good strat for low APM players. No. When is the next big SC2 tourney? Depends on what you define by big. Dreamhack Valencia has been announced for May of this year. I don't know if that's qualifiers or if the event is May. I think the event might be June. And Dreamhack Atlanta is happening in November. So those are the two big ESL Pro Tour events. But of course, there are intervening events. There's like the Casters Pro League. There's going to be Nation Wars coming up. Um, GSL, of course and whatever other GSL-related things. Um, but those are the largest LAN events for this year. Did you catch the Pro 2s games today? Do you think 2s will become a thing? That, that ship sailed a long time ago. I don't know about that. Unfortunately, there have, were no real efforts put into making 2v2 a thing in StarCraft 2, even down to having a Zerg on your team actively hurting you if you're not Zerg because you can't build on their creep. Like stuff like that. What do you, what building do you think drones dream of becoming? I think drones dread the idea of uh, ever becoming buildings. This is a horrible fate, and and they are free spirits, and that's why they would rather trip over each other and die to liberators, and and reapers rather than become buildings even temporarily. And that's why my drones always die. Do you think copying pro player builds is better than following guides? It depends. A lot of guides are based on pro player builds, either directly or loosely. Um, I don't think you should try, especially if you're below platinum or something, you shouldn't try to do exactly what Cyril uh, or Zest or, or Maru is doing. But I think at least getting an idea of what they're trying to do. Guides mostly are just a very distilled version of what pro builds are. If you are looking for players, you got Cure. Um, you have Cure. You have... Well, Cyril is actually pretty easy to follow for how good he is. Because um, Cyril is just a boring player. Cyril just does everything really well and is always ready. And his mechanics are perfect. But you can pretty much copy what he's doing way slower and still be pretty well off. Uh, and then for Protoss, you have like uh, Showtime. And to an extent, I would say... Mostly Showtime. Most of them. <laughs> uh, like, uh, it's hard for Protoss. Is GSL still seeing a big deal? It is a big deal. I don't think it's quite as big a deal as it once was with pretty solidly now Europe being the strongest region. Um, just because StarCraft 2 is just not huge in korea compared like starcraft 1 is still more popular than starcraft 2 in korea and that never stopped being true 
um, but especially after remastered. Winter low APM Zerg versus low APM Terran. Who wins? Well, so far, Zerg is one out, but that's only because I wasn't the Terran. If you're at Chili's, do you order a Marg or a nice big beer? Um, probably a Long Island iced tea so I can drink it as little as possible before getting intoxicated and forget the fact I went to Chili's for some reason. Korea is so strange. Uh, when does SC1 being stop being popular in South Korea? I'll check my calendar. Is AoE the best age game? Oh yeah, there are others. <laughs> What's your opinion on Arby's? I, I can't share that at this time. What happens inside a gas mining building? Classified. All right, we're running out of questions. Surprise, good, okay, and bad questions. Um, but that's okay. All right. I hope this was entertaining. I hope it was uh, edutaining. I hope it was educational. I hope I made your day and your and maybe even your games. A little bit better. Good luck on the Season 2 StarCraft 2 2022 Challenge. I'll see you next time for more Bronze Platinum. Uh, and whatever else Bobby comes up with for the ranking system. The next episode. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill. <laughs>